What's up YouTube? I am Mikuji Crypto and today we're going to be looking at around 30 altcoins. These are the altcoins that you guys wanted me to take a look at on the Discord group. So what I'm planning to do is um, every Friday, once a week, whatever you guys recommend to me, I'll take a look at and I'll make a video out of that and um, provide some value and I'll tell you guys um, the best entries and the best exits that you can possibly see for the alts that you're currently in or the alts you want to get into in the future. So uh, currently we're going to look at all of these. I believe there are 30 or so. Um, so let's get started. I might try to make this video into two um, uh, two parts depending on how long this takes or I'll just try to make this under an hour as fast as I can and go through these coins as fast as I possibly can. All right, guys? Uh, so let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about XLM USDT first and then we'll go down the list. So for XLM, which is referred to as Stellar, I made a video today about eight hours ago and I said how Stellar is currently making an ascending channel. It currently broke out of this level. It retested the region and it's making its way up. If you look closely, we are almost about to hit our first take profit level, which is over here because of the previous resistance. And uh, I believe that Stellar Lumen can go all the way up over here, which is the 60.488 region. So, so far, uh, we're on the track of profit or making profit. And we're if you bought Stellar Lumen due to my video today, if you saw value in the video and you thought my reasoning was fair and you bought it, you should be up about 5.5% right now. And uh, this whole trade should make us about 20% profits. Uh, so right now, Stellar Lumen is on track. Uh, now, might make, now might be a good time to buy if it comes down a little lower, possibly to the 0 0.51 region that may also be a good entry since it hasn't completely taken off yet. Okay, and for the exits of Stellar Lumen, I also told you guys that if it breaks this major trend line, then you might want to exit your trade just because um, at this point, you could see a major correction or it could make a different structure. And in order to avoid leaving it up to risk and uh, at that given point in time, because now the trade is not in your control since the major support zone has been broken uh, and it could make any other structure, it could go down, it could go up. Uh, you don't really know so instead of risking what i generally do is i generally get out of the trade because i don't like an uncertainty when i get into a trade so right now um stella looks like it's headed for the upside because it has broken the previous resistance zone okay uh the next one is uh zenfuse trading platform token okay it's um it's partnered with um it's paired with wrapped ether so this was another request that i got We'll just do a simple top-down analysis to see where we're at. Okay, so as you can see for uh, Zenfuse Wrapped Ether on the daily, um, it was making a downtrend. It clearly broke out of it. It retested. So this would have been the best entry because it broke and retested in this region. Uh, after the retest, it's made higher highs. Um, and currently, it looks like it's about this retracing. Um, the next level that it could retrace to will be this region where rejection is currently being seen over here. <coughs> now, so what could happen in this region? Because it is making a, um, a wedge pattern on the four alley. So initially, it made a double top, which is a bearish sign. It is kind, kind of broken down past it and it's kind of retouching currently so what could generally happen is when you see this pattern a double top and a move to the downside this reach out teach us this retouch could be bearish and if it's bearish you can see a major zone a major move down to the downside over here uh, but so far on the four hourly there is not a lot of bearish action in terms of candlesticks okay so on the one hourly it does look like some type of bearish action over here uh, with the candlestick over here and uh, so what can generally happen is uh, if you are in this trade, uh, you might want to get out of this trade if it breaks past this zone over here. Because at this zone, this would be the major um, support zone. Right, so this would be the major support zone over here. And if it clearly breaks out of this major support zone, then the next major support zone would be essentially over here. Right, over there or over here. Yeah, over here is better because it's in conjecture with more errors. Uh, and that will be a decrease of 40% of your portfolio. So uh, it can, from here, it could bounce up to the upside after coming over here. But I don't, like, I personally wouldn't risk it 
like holding on to a losing trade, losing 40% for the possibility of a maybe coming down over here, right? And the other scenario is if it doesn't go down and break this support region, you could also do this and a retouch, which could potentially be a good entry at that given point in time because at that point, this uh, downtrend is now um, not valid anymore. So if it breaks above and retouches this area and shows major rejection at this support zone, that could be a good time to enter uh, Zenfuse trading platform token. Okay, uh, next is VTHO. So VTHO, uh, this is the coin that we started um, essentially pumping at the 0 0.16 level and uh, ended up making about 450 to 500 gains, 500% 500 gains. And uh, we spoke of VTHO uh, earlier. I think I've done a few updates on VTHO. And I said how uh, VTHO is making an ascending uh, channel over here. And it wasn't a consolidation on the four hourly and the hourly. Um, yeah, so right now, VTHO has technically, so it has broken past this trend line, as you see over here. But this trend line wouldn't be considered a major trend line just because it's only touching uh, two times over here, right? So I would disregard this trend line entirely because and I would say it is making a new structure. So what I'm basically trying to do is find new conjection zones, like um, uh, new new major zones. And currently, uh, VTHO doesn't have that. It is simply just sitting in this uh, consolidation area. For VTHO. Uh, so right now, because it is still currently in a support zone, because if you look towards the left over here, there is support and there is major rejection on the one hour. It's not major, but this is a um, this is the most bullish candlestick you could possibly get. Uh, it's called a hammer candlestick, and if you generally see this at the bottom of a support, it would mean that uh, reversal could potentially happen, right? And it has uh, almost broken out of this uh, trend line, uh, which means that it could potentially go up at this point in time. So I would say this trade is still valid right now. It would only be considered invalid if, yeah, so right now VTHO looks like it's trying to go up here. If it breaks this area, I could do that and go towards the upside because it is forming a type of wedge pattern. Um, so currently the trade is still valid, but the moment it breaks past this region decisively, it will be, un be unvalid or non-valid because then you could see potentially this. So that's the next um, scenario that could happen. So you have two scenarios, A or B, and uh, I'll just point it out over here. A or B, and I can tell right now it's extremely bearish because it did have a huge pump to the upside and no major retest of the major zones, uh, which is why it is consolidating at such a level right now. But it could pick up steam at this point in time. It doesn't necessarily have to break down past the support zone. It could literally just keep going up at this point as well. I mean, anything could really happen if uh, more volume comes into VTHO at this point in time. Okay, so again, two scenarios, A or B. Uh, the A scenario will go to this next level, which would be a um, on the current side, a 30% increase, so a 30 to 40% increase, or it could even break past this area. So it could essentially do this to make higher highs. That's also a scenario. Okay, so A or B. Next is SFP USDT. Okay, so SFP, um, it was a new coin. I believe a bunch of you guys asked me to take a look at it, but there wasn't enough information on the charts because it had literally just been released. And I said, um, uh, it's not something I would want to look at because it was just released, because there's not enough structure again. So um, for VTHO, uh, sorry, SFP, there's honestly not enough information. So I, I think I told you guys what could potentially happen. So on the four hour, there was this beautiful uh, bullish candle that was, that was over here but it just rejected that area after that generally when you see this beautiful bullish candle the move will be to an upside so this could be a definite this could definitely be a, a fake out for a lot of uh day traders because if they see this they'll be like okay it's a good area to buy because it's a conjunction with the previous uh support zone as well if you see over here right so this is also a support zone over here so it was a good area to buy and this beautiful candle was there too but what happened was uh i think due to the btc dominance uh, it just ended up falling right through but this four hour candle hasn't closed yet and it is currently 945 which means in the next hour and 15 minutes the four hour candle that you see over here could potentially close in the green so it could literally come up and close in the green and if that happens then essentially this was a stop loss hunt and sfp could go up 
But if that doesn't happen and it closes decisively in the red, then it could essentially go down to the 2.4142 region. So right now, SFP is essentially fighting uh, for its life if it wants to go up or down, because that literally has to close in the green uh, for it to be considered a bullish candle. And this would be considered a very bullish candle because of the rejection of the length of the wick. The length of the wick is quite large uh, compared to the other wicks if you look towards your left, right? So uh, that's what I see for SFP. If you're still holding SFP, it would entirely depend on whether this candle kind of closes green or it closes um, down in the red. Okay. Um, and if you want to take, um, if you want to get into SFP, I personally wouldn't, just because it's a new coin and there's a lot of uh, volatility with new coins. But if it does close in the green, this would be the good take profit level, which is the 3.3 region, which would be 20% um, gains. All right. Okay, next one is one, Harmony USDT. So Harmony, uh, we spoke about earlier, and we spoke about Harmony over here. We said that it was making a wedge pattern on the four hour. Uh, it ended up breaking and retesting the wedge, as you see. I think I made a video about this, or I put it on the Discord group. So it broke, it retested over here, if you can see clearly, and uh, it ended up going. So I retested over here. Yeah, so like that. So I retested like that. And it ended up going really high, as you see. And uh, right now, one is making its new structure. Yeah. So let me just look at the daily for a second. Yeah, so it hasn't really retested the previous support zone. So that's still in play for it to do. It could still do that. And uh, I personally wouldn't get into one or harmony right now just because of the fact that it is um, it is overextended in my opinion yeah it is overextended in my opinion uh, if you're still holding uh, harmony what you can do is you can take profits at this region at a 0 0.03816 or the 0 0.0364 region because it looks like uh, harmony is making its way up to that area over there um, if it breaks this area this rising and this ascending channel what you could generally see or potentially see is a move down to this region one second sorry so what you could see is a move down to this region which is the 0 0.02272 region over here and uh, if you were to still hold on to that that would be a 26 percent decrease of the of your portfolio or of your coin that you're holding of harmony if you're holding harmony and uh, that's up to you entirely if you want to hold on to the coin at that point but currently we are doing this for Harmony just because we're on an ascending channel, okay? Uh, next coin is Alpha USDT. So I'll do a simple top-down analysis for Alpha. I'll try to find some structure for Alpha currently. And uh, Alpha is currently making an ascending um, channel, right? And it looks like Alpha is attempting to retest this region so it's basically right now it's currently in a downtrend um, as long as it's respecting this trend line uh, alpha looks like it's attempting to retest the major trend line that is seen over here okay which is the 1.05 1.02 region and if it comes over there um, i suggest if it does this it's a very simple strategy over here if it comes here you see rejection you can either get in on the trend line if you'd like or you can wait till it decisively breaks above and then retest the area then you can buy. So there'd be two entries for Alpha, uh, for Alpha USDT. If you're looking to enter Alpha USDT, one would be on the trend line, and the other one would be if there's a decisive break out of the structure and a retest of the area. Uh, generally, if you want a safer trade, I would suggest uh, the break out of this trend line and a retest to show rejection, because at that point of time, you would have two conjunction zones rather than one. Uh, the two zones would be two support zones would be this trend line and this trend line. So that area would be the best area to buy Alpha USDT if you want to, or if you want to be a little risky and maybe buy a little lower, you can buy in this area as well if it comes and touches that um, trend line zone. Okay, I also I want to point out that there is no previous support regions as well. I mean, you could say that um, this region is a support area or this area is a support area, but they're not very strong in my opinion since it has only touched once. Okay, so you can see something like that. Okay, now it's uh, dot USDT next. Oh wow, dot has really gone up. That's awesome. Yeah, so I think someone asked me for dot, 
and I told them if DOT comes to retest this area, it would be a really good buying opportunity. And DOT sadly didn't do that. So um, you guys didn't get a good buying opportunity. What it ended up doing is um, it ended up retesting the support zone, uh, the support zone that was previously there and making higher highs. So if you see over here, this was the previous support zone. It just essentially broke up, retested the area and moved up. So quite sim uh, simple structure and it's still going. Uh, honestly, I would recommend if you're still holding DOT, keep holding DOT, uh, if you ended up buying DOT, uh, and you don't need to sell at this point. If you want to sell, sell if it breaks past this trend line structure, this major trend line structure. Because uh, if it does break past that trend line structure, let's say it comes down and it breaks through, what could really happen is it could make any structure after that, um, or it could literally just, you know, shoot up, sorry, shoot down. Uh, for a correction so at this point there's uncertainty and i don't like dealing with uncertainty uh and just because of that reason i wouldn't be in this trade if it does break the major trend line structure all right and also i want to point out that i don't think yeah dot has never been here before so um it could really rally to the upside and dot is a good coin so we'll see how far it can go during this bull run Okay, GRT USDT. We have spoken about GRT before because I marked up the charts. And I said that GRT will be in a good buying up. So essentially, it was making a descending channel towards this ascending channel over here. And it still is making descending channel. Um, and it still hasn't retested this area. So I would say if GRT comes to exactly where I circled before, see, there was previous uh, support over here. If it comes down to this area, which is the 1.90995, that'll be a very good buying opportunity because the support zones for GRT at that area is the previous horizontal zone, right? The ascending uh, trend line, the descending trend line. So there's three support zones over here, which makes it a very powerful support area. Uh, so generally, when there's really strong areas like this. I like to trade that. And let's just look, take a look and see if there's any events for GRT as well. GRT. Because if there is events, then this would mean a move to the upside. And the graph does have an event. It's called the protocol town hall. Okay, so there's an event. It's not a major event. It's on the 23rd. Today is the 19th. So you can see a steady rise with GRT. If you buy it over here, I will have to look into more of the fundamentals aspect to make this the decision if it's a good coin. But currently, if GRT comes over here, that could be a really good buying opportunity just because of the fundamentals that there is news coming up in the near future. So we could see a steady rise if they advertise the news enough. And also, it is a major support area. Uh, but the second option for GRT is obviously if it breaks down past this area. Um, and if it does do that, then obviously, um, me personally, I wouldn't be in the trade if it does that because there's uncertainty at that point and I could expect a major correction. Right, but as of now, uh, the possibility of A is uh, more more likely to play out for GRT. Okay. Uh, next is VET V Chain USDT. Okay, so currently V Chain is doing really good. It looks like it's about a pump on the USDT pair. So it's a simple move, exactly uh, as the GRT scenario, as I just explained uh, right before this. So what happened was. Let me just draw this trend line properly so I can get as many touches of the candlesticks as possible. Yeah, okay. So uh, simply put, uh, VeChain has done exactly as I said with GRT. So it was respecting this over this top trend line. It clearly broke and it retested. And now it's making a move to the upside. So this is a good buying opportunity for uh, VeChain or VET. As you see over there, it was perfect. And it's making an uptrend. There was also previous support over here with two trend line support zones and now it looks like uh, v chain is making a move to the upside right the next take profit level would be over here so v chain is doing good so if you bought a current level that would be an eight percent increase okay guys uh, i would say get out of the trade or it might be, i mean you guys don't have to obviously but um, i wouldn't be in the trade if it decisively breaks below this area essentially Right, so if it goes like that, breaks below this area, I wouldn't be in the trade any longer. But VET looks like it's going to the upside right now. 
DNT USDT. Um, DNT USDT has still not given us much. We spoke about this earlier. Essentially, it is moving towards this trend line region, and it is currently reacting to the trend line. Yeah, so I'm just going to draw this trend line a little better just so I can uh, get the best amount of information. Yeah, so essentially, uh, it looks like there is a reaction happening to the trend line right now. Um, I, I personally wouldn't trade this coin just because it's giving me a very large consolidation and I'm a trend trader. That's my style of trading. Uh, but we can see generally if there is a break past this area, we can see a move of uh, uh, DNT district ox to this region see we can we can move down to the lower support region that I hit earlier which is a 0 0.2716 and from there we can potentially go up or if we uh, go right through we can also do that right and that would be reaching this support zone over here so let me just move this up so i personally wouldn't get into district ox um just because it's consolidated for a long period of time and the price action is not very clean but you also have to realize that uh, the break of this trend line could mean a move to the bottom. But it looks like right now uh, we might have a pump to the upside for District OX. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, Pundi X uh, is looking good. Currently is making an ascending uh, channel. So we spoke about Pundi X um, down over here. It was making a wedge pattern. It broke above, so it ended up following scenario A. It broke above, retouched, and shot right up. And now Pundi X is making its own structure. And uh, there is no divergence. There's a divergence over here, but not over here. Uh, which means that we could potentially see a move to the upside for Pundi X. So if you're holding Pundis, keep holding it. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right. Pundi, Pundi, wherever you pronounce it. But um, to the next time high, that's a <coughs> that's a 24% increase. Um, so we can essentially do this, which is look, which, which is which is what uh, we look like we're doing right now, or we can uh, just do this: a break to the downside and retest, and potentially go to the next support zone, which could be here, at the 0 0.001098 region, or move down over here somewhere. To me, right now, it looks like uh, scenario one is most likely to play out for Pundi X. Okay, that's uh. A bounce of this region uh, to make higher highs or to touch this resistance zone because this is currently at uh, a major support level which is a horizontal zone and a, tra and a trending uh, up, up line okay next so we finish one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven coins i think another 20 to go let's do this algorand btc um, I spoke about Algorand in a video I made earlier and Algorand looks like it's in a very good buying op opportunity in my in my opinion um, because it is in a strong support zone I drew this area before I'll get rid of this okay um, and it also is in a major ascending uh, trend line channel so it's one it's two a horizontal zone uh, a trend line diagonal trend line And also, it is making a descending channel over here. Okay, um, I, I would say right now um, it hasn't closed on the four hour yet. If it, this closes on the green in the four hour, that might be the best buying opportunity for Algorand. So I'll just have to wait and see for Algorand. Um, it takes another hour to close. Uh, and right now, it is looking like it might do that. It all depends on the next one hour candle. But this might be a good buying opportunity for Algorand at this area. Because if this closes in the green, um, we can literally go from here to the next uh, resistance zone, which is around there. Which would be from the current level, would be a 15% increase. And if we break past that level, we can essentially go back to the all-time high, which would be a 60% increase. So Algorand may be in a good buying opportunity right now, depending if the candlestick closes in the green on the four-hour chart. Okay, and again, I'll tell you both the scenarios, scenario B and scenario A. All 
All right, guys. Okay, now we'll do Steam USDT. Steam is making a clear uptrend. I'll try to uh, get some structure for Steam. Look at the daily. Yeah, so it looks very overextended right now. I personally wouldn't get into this trade because these are not the type of charts I like to trade. Uh, I like to trade wedges uh, and ascending channels, essentially. Or uh, sometimes I do consolidations as well. But I mainly focus on structures, and uh, these are this is an ascending channel, but it's the price action is too uh, small. So if it bounces here and goes up, oh, at nine percent, that's not bad actually. Let me take a look at this. Yeah, so essentially, if you want to get into this trade, there is also a um, divergence over here, right? Which means that a reversal could be happening sometime soon. Yeah, so I, I personally wouldn't get into this trade just because of that reason. Um, if you want to really get into this, I mean, it is at your risk. Uh, just essentially, you get it on the trend line touch. You can go down to the 15-minute chart for a better entry over here. And as soon as it comes down to the trend line, like I'll show you an entry you could do, like essentially over here. So it came down to the trend line, it was respecting this thing. And as soon as it broke above, you can put a buy order in. And you can do the same thing over here. So if it comes down to the trend line again, let's say it uh, does this. If it breaks above this, you can put a buy order in, and you can potentially uh, that could potentially be your entry, right? And you can ride that out depending if you want to hodl or not. So you can do that if you want to enter. Uh, I personally wouldn't just because it is overextended. Um, what I can see for Steam right now is scenario A. So I'll give you both the scenarios, and then scenario B. If it breaks below and the next major support zone will be here so it could have a heavy retracement down to this area and in my opinion that's might that's probably what it might do so that area or this area since it is a stronger support zone so i would say over here since it includes this in a way as well right so one two three four five so this may be the best area to buy steam if it comes down to that area if you're still holding steam keep holding because it is currently respecting an ascending channel um if you if you want to take money out um if, if it breaks that ascending channel that might be a good opportunity to take up profits if you're holding uh, steam usdt okay uh v chain is next i spoke about that in the usdt pair this will be the btc pair and uh, i told you guys that vet is currently making a ascending channel and right now within the ascending channel, it is making a descending channel. And uh, within this descending channel, uh, it is currently respecting the above trend line. Um, I personally told you guys that I will get into VET if it touches the lower support zone, because that will be a much safer risk to reward, right? So if it touches over here, I can literally make a 4.7 to one. So for every one apple I'm risking, I can make up to five apples essentially. So this will give me the best entry for VeChain. Uh, currently, I, I wouldn't be satisfied with this entry. Uh, if it does something like that and shows me massive rejection to that area, then I might consider it. Uh, but as of now, I personally would get into VeChain in this area because that would be give me the best risk to reward. Okay, and that would be the lowest entry area as well. I, I will I would much prefer this area than entering over here. Uh, if you guys really want to enter uh, VeChain, if it clearly breaks out of this area and retests, that could be a good area to buy okay so this area might be a good area to buy if you're looking at an entry and then from there we could essentially see a move to the upside okay so that's where it's happening for vchain but currently i'm hoping that it comes down over here because that will give me a very good buying opportunity for vchain next is stmx usdt so essentially what SCMX did was, I think this is a new coin as well, because it's, oh no, it isn't. So it has some data. Yeah, so it's been around for a while. Uh, we are very overextended, as you can see over here. And we are making a, um, essentially an ascending channel. We were making an ascending channel. We broke below and we made another ascending channel. So we had two ascending channels, essentially. And uh, right now, STMX's price action is really, um, it's weird in my opinion. There's not a lot to go out of. 
off of okay so um, yeah so right now it's essentially just uh, respecting this above trend line let's get rid of all of this stuff go to the four hour chart yeah okay so it has support region over here so what we could see for STMX is essentially um, right now it is going up because it's respecting this channel uh, but if it does go down we could see a bounce over here to the upside and that may potentially be a, a better entry but I personally wouldn't enter that area just because um, this doesn't give me enough confluences there's no major trend lines or like you know uh, support zones in that area it's just a very simple support area for horizontal support and that's not enough for me personally to get into a trade but uh, yeah right now is it's attempting to retest the alt, uh, the high, the previous high over here. Um, it has kind of retested it twice already and rejected off it. And it's going for a third time now. So we'll see how it reacts. Um, I personally wouldn't get into this trade. But if you do want to get into this trade, um, and it is a risky trade to get into, in my opinion, because we are overextended, possibly um, that could be a good entry. Or if it touches this trend line again, you can go down to the 15 minute chart. So it's tighter price action. And you can essentially time it. If it goes down to the trend line, try to draw the trend line together. And if it goes down a trend line and touches it, that may be a good entry. But it is a risky trade. If you're holding STMX, uh, honestly, keep holding it. Uh, if it breaks past this trend line, then after that, it could essentially make any structure, whether it's uh, it's a wedge, whether it's uh, you know a ascending channel, a descending channel. In my opinion, it most likely will be a descending channel because it will need to retrace in order to gain more liquidity and support. And the, that area will be this area, which is a 0 0.009254 region. Okay, uh, next one is Matic. And Matic has made a very bullish move towards the upside just now. So uh, we already spoke about Matic, and we spoke about Matic over here. And it is done exactly what we had spoken about. So we said a break of the, re of the area, a retest, it showed us a very bullish uh, hammer on the four hour chart. Uh, this would have been the best entry of this candlestick. If I was watching Matic, I might have entered over here. And from there, it has gone up 70%, which is amazing. Uh, right now, there is no entry for Matic except for possibly a retest of this region. So if Matic does this, if it comes down to this area, which would be a... Um, a, a trend line slash horizontal area so it's two support zones in this area uh, this may be a good entry okay so it comes here shows us rejection uh, you could enter a formatic at 0 0.14039 but you also get, got to take uh, scenario 2 into uh, precaution as well and that is scenario 2 so if it breaks this area this major support zone it could go down and we don't know how far it could go down because and for that you have to see the previous support area so it could go down to this region essentially Okay, because if you look on the one hour, that was a support area. Okay, I hope that clears it up. So if you're holding Matic right now, keep holding Matic because it hasn't showed us any sign of any bearish signs as such. It is clearly respecting an upwards trend line and it could potentially go, I'm not sure how far. So we'll see because I don't think there is previous structure. No, there isn't. So we don't know how far this can essentially go. Reef BTC. So Reef has been doing, been doing really bad. Um, we spoke about Reef on the video, and I said I would think about buying Reef at the 6.9 to 7.0 region. And what's happened so far is Reef has had a very heavy retracement. Okay, uh, it is still 10.10, which means that this four-hour candlestick hasn't closed yet. Um, what could happen is Reef could literally close if Reef closes at the 0 0.00070 region. Uh, this is, by the way, Satoshi's. This is not the USDT pair. Uh, and I'm not going to do conversion because I have to look at the USDT chart as well in order to do conversion. All right. But, um, yeah, so currently it is respecting these zones. If it closes higher at the 0 0.00070, 0 0.71, area, then what we could see for Reef is a move to the upside. Potentially to here, which is the next major uh, resistance zone. Let me just delete that. And if that were to occur, that would be a 21% gain. Okay. 
Uh, but right now, because of the FUD and the way that Reef BTC or Reef USDT has reacted, uh, I don't know if I will get into this. Most likely not, because of such bearish uh, action off Reef. Okay. Um, I'll have to do more analysis of Reef in order to determine. I'll have to look at the order book. I'll have to try to find the sentimental analysis point of view. If I can find that, which is basically what the retailer, the major, or um, the large bag holders are doing, like the whales, etc. So I'll have to look at that in order to make a judgment on this. But due to the FUD, I might stay away from Reef as of now, just because of the craziness that's happening. Okay, uh, I'll look at Reef USDT as well just so uh, i know you guys are going to be like oh do reef usdt so i'll do it for you guys yeah so reef usdt is essentially doing the exact same thing so as you can see over here uh reef usdt is respecting the four hours so there's a horizontal zone that is respecting as well as the tr uh the trend line over here i would only get into reef if it gives me this so reef usdt i would only get into it if it shoots past this trend line and retests and then shows me more rejection over here because um, then I would know that the the possibility of the downtrend ending is over with and that would give me a bullish sign to enter so I would enter if it breaks clearly and retest the area and that will make it the 0 0.0 the 0 0.040 region in terms of uh, cents I believe for the USDT pair of reef okay guys so that may be a good entry uh, but we still have to wait and see what Reef does right now because it could potentially shoot down depending upon how the 4-hour candle closes, whether it's bearish or bullish. Okay, uh, let's do next. So I've done GRT, DNT. Reef. Okay, now next is VRA USDT. Okay, so VRA is making a very clean structure towards the upside. It's essentially making a very clean ascending uh, channel. Uh, currently, it is, yeah, essentially for this, uh, I'll try to look at the one day. Yeah, see, there's not enough price action over here. If I look towards the left, there's nothing else. So it's literally at its all-time high. It's already respected this area over here. Um, so I wouldn't trade this pair just because we are extremely overextended. I know a lot of guys that will trade this, just you know, jump in and jump out. Essentially, what they'll do is they'll uh, make one of these, right? They wait for a break, a retest, and they'll buy over here, and they'll try to ride it out as much as they can. And they keep doing this. A lot of uh, scalpers slash day traders do this, uh, but that's not my style, so I wouldn't do that. Or they would just buy at the bottom of the trend line. But if, you, if you're holding VRA, I suggest keep holding it because it's clearly going to the upside. I could literally just keep doing this for, I don't know how long, a few days maybe. Maybe even just a few hours. But as long as it does that and respects this trend line, be in it. The moment it does this, breaks decisively below, uh, I personally wouldn't be in it. So that's up to you. right? But I can't give you advice on entering this trade just because I wouldn't trade this, uh, this pair just because of the fact that it's overextended. And also there's a divergence seen on the RSI, which signifies that uh, it is currently, that uh, it, it is possibly overbought and there could be a reversal coming soon. Okay. Next is Litecoin USDT. So Litecoin is a very good coin to trade in my opinion, because Litecoin is just $243, right? Ethereum has shot up, Bitcoin has shot up, and Litecoin really hasn't seen the same type of results as Ethereum and Bitcoin has. So I believe Litecoin currently is undervalued and uh, I should have honestly traded Litecoin over here. It made this move and it made this beautiful retest. I should have literally got it on Litecoin over here because if I were to leverage this, I would have made 5% and I did 3x leverage, that's 15%. So Litecoin is a good coin to uh, day trade in my opinion or to scalp uh, just because it's, uh, I think it's undervalued and it can go a lot higher, right? So if you want to enter Litecoin, you can literally just do this. So if it comes down to the major trend line region, so that I can give you two entries. If it comes down to the major trend line region and shows rejection, that could be just a very simple entry to get into. Uh, a second entry is if it come, does it come down to the trend line like this, it breaks up, it retests that trend line and shows a bullish sign. Like over here, there was a bullish engulfing candle. 
that may be a good entrance for Litecoin. Uh, but as, as of right now, if you do want to enter Litecoin, you can easily just enter off the touch of the major trend line zone. And if it shows rejection and error, you can uh, e essentially buy in over there. But also, um, you got to look at both aspects. So if it does break decisively be beneath the trend line, we can make our ways to the downside. Okay, this is, this is a very simple um, structure that it's making. But right now, Litecoin is extremely bullish, in my opinion. Uh, so we'll see what happens for Litecoin. Okay, next is front ETH. Let me just get rid of this stuff over here. Okay, so front ETH um, looks like it's overextended right now. Oh, this is that coin that uh, that YouTuber with the most amount of followers, I believe, uh, he uh, he shilled this coin pretty hard. That's why the price action really isn't uh, very structured. Okay, so currently for front ETH, it is respecting a support zone over here. So it was making this type of channel. And so this would have been a good entry point over here. It rejected it, it went up. And uh, it's still kind of having in its own lingo over here. So it is in a support zone. And it is respecting the support zone. So I personally wouldn't trade this uh, coin because I just believe this is an artificial pump because some guy shilled it on YouTube uh, or hyped it on YouTube. But if you do really want to enter this coin, I'd say now will be the best time because it is rejecting the major support zone and it could go up over here. Um, or the second option again is scenario B, which is this, right? So now would be the best time to enter front ETH if you really want to enter front ETH. If you're planning on exiting front ETH, uh, in my opinion, you should still keep holding it. Uh, because if it does break below the support zone, then uh, this would be deemed as uh, possibly uh, a reversal, right? It could go down to the downside and possibly to this region, which would be the 0 0.007078 region, which is a very large move to the downside, right? You probably essentially lose 50% of your gains. So two options, option A and option B. Next is RSR USDT. I'm just going to get rid of this because it doesn't really make sense. So guys, I'm like literally going through these charts in like two minutes. If you keep doing this, uh, you would get you get a lot faster at it, in my opinion. Yeah, and it comes a lot easier. But if you really want to get into trades, you really have to take your time. Okay, so um, yeah, so over here. Uh, we're making essentially an ascending channel. It's respected, it's come here once, it's gone up, it's respected it twice, three times, and now it looks like the fourth time, okay? Uh, we made a double talk-ish pattern, we broke down, we retested it over here earlier, and we rejected it, come down to retest it again. So right now we're currently fighting between this area, which is a resistance zone, and this support zone. The above area is a zone, which is a trend line slash support uh, resistance zone. The lower area is a support zone slash trend line zone. Uh, essentially, what we want to see is a decisive break to the upside and a retest of the area, okay? And then we can see a higher move to the upside. So that's what we see right now for RSR uh, USDT. The second option, obviously, is a reversal to the downside, and that's A and B. If you're currently holding RSR, uh, just keep holding it because uh, it is still bullish in my books. Uh, if it clearly breaks above and it retests, or if you want, you can even uh, enter now. I personally wouldn't, just because uh, this isn't my type of trade that I like to get into. But uh, yes, every time it touches the trend line, you can enter the trade, uh, just to keep it simple. But I personally wouldn't get into this trade because of the fact that uh, it is not my type of trade that I like to trade, okay? But if you don't wanna get into it now, you can literally wait for a break and for it to come back to the trend line. And the moment it comes back to the trend line, you can place a, a buying order if there is rejection in that zone. Okay, so the scenario A and scenario B, and scenario B would be the um, the negative uh, action. Okay, which means it would be going down. Next is next is BNB USDT. Okay, um, oh man, this is the I, I don't like I don't really like looking at this chart 
because I was looking at BNB over here and I had missed this entry and I was hoping it would come back over here so I could buy it and it didn't it ended up coming here and uh, I, I honestly regret it because I was like no it's going to come back and I'm shooting right up and now BNB is up a ridiculous amount for my buy in order right as you see over here yeah wow so I don't want to look at BNB to be honest missed a beautiful entry 600% oh my god oh that's a lot of money I just missed out on so yeah so BNB is uh, sad to look at in my opinion seriously but uh, yeah so what happened with BNB was it essentially made this wedge pattern and generally when a wedge pattern occurs it breaks below that area and retests and it shows rejection it can go to the downside however because BNB was in such high demand uh, that whole scenario was just completely irrelevant it just ended up still going to the upside so the technicals that even matter for this coin and it's extremely bullish as you see over here okay um, if I try to find some structure for BNB for Binance coin uh, essentially we can see something like that which is a ascending channel but we are extremely overextended and we also have a divergence in the RSI and again what a divergence means is essentially that you see this area over here on the chart this is low right and this is high but on the RSI this is high and this is low right so if I draw a trend line see that's high and that goes low but over here this is low and that's high uh, that basically shows that a possible reversal could be happening soon so when I see RSI's on the charts I just tend to stay away from that trade altogether because I don't want to be risking uh, my capital for something that with the odds possibly against me. But uh, if you do really want to enter this trade, you can enter off a simple retouch of the trend line because that area will be considered a support zone, right? And uh, so it looks like what's happened over here was. Um, let me look at it horizontal line here so it, it came here it retouches it went down it came back up it retouched the area and it retouched the area again so it just looks like right now um, Binance coin may possibly go up or it may just possibly come down to retouch the trend line to uh, in order to get more liquidity to go higher um, I wouldn't trade this coin currently it could obviously it could still keep going up to I don't even know how much but uh, yeah, I will just wait for it to break. So, but right now I, I can't give you a lot of information because it's simply just respecting an ascending channel. Um, so again, let's draw the options over here. If you want to enter, you can enter off the trend line. And if you want to exit, you can simply uh, exit when it breaks this ascending trend line. Okay. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna drink of water. Hold on, how many more? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's great. I've done 22 coins. I have eight more to go, rushing through this. Oh, man. Okay. Rubik wrapped ether. So if I do a simple top-down analysis, it looks like Rubik has corrected quite a bit from what it was. It could potentially keep correcting. So what Rubik did was it made a double top, it retested the area, and it pushed down. And generally when it does that, the next push will be uh, quite bearish. So it might make some big moves to the downside because this is a perfect structure to make it uh, into a bearish move. And uh, I'll just draw some support zones over here. So as you see over here, we could potentially be reacting to this support zone. Okay. But it's not enough, honestly. It's not enough uh, information to go off of. So this would be over here. This would be a major support zone, and we have broken that area. We retest it, retested it, and we come back down. Okay. Um, for this coin, essentially what we're doing is this: we keep retesting this area, and we keep going down towards the downside. So right now, Rubik wrapped ether gives me no good entry, and I wouldn't trade this at all. Uh, I might short it if I want to, but on the RSI, we are very low. And we do have a divergence on the RSI on the one hour chart. 
which shows that a possible reversal could come. So it might start pumping sometime soon. It might even happen now. But right now, I wouldn't touch RBC, uh, W, or wrapped ether because of this reason. There's not enough structure to go off of. Okay, all we have is previous support zones, which are now resistance zones because we have broken that area. Uh, so right now, I wouldn't uh, even look at this. I would possibly look at it if it uh, if it possibly gives me this and retouches the area. Then I might look at it like that because that would mean that there is a previous support area. We have broken technically down past a, a descending channel. Uh, so that would give me two confluences and I could potentially look at entering at that point, okay? And I hope if you're holding this, you might have exited maybe up here, uh, but if you haven't yet, um, I, I, that's up to you what you wanna do if you haven't yet. You can exit now or you can wait because it could potentially go up at this point, but then you're leaving it up to God basically, right? Or I should say the whales because they essentially decide what happens. Okay, next is SRK, which is Spark Point uh, USDT. So it looks like SRK could potentially be a new coin because it's only only have information for a few days. Uh, and I, I personally don't like trading these kind of coins because it's not enough information to go out of. I like to see a lot of uh, candlesticks, a nice structure in order to trade out of. Uh, but right now, what's happening for SRK, which is Spark Point, is essentially it's retesting. It keeps testing and going down uh, off this trend line, right? Uh, if you're looking to enter SRK, I personally wouldn't just because it's probably a, a shit coin. Uh, I'm sorry if I offend you with my language, but that's what it looks like so far with uh, you know the price action. But uh, I would probably do something like that. Okay, and so that would be an entrance over here, and that would match the previous support zone, which is this support zone, so this line, and this trend line. So this rejection over there, that would be a good entry for spark points, okay? Uh, if it breaks past this area that is currently going towards, then we could see a move to the downside. And right now, um, it doesn't really give us a lot of information because the charts, there's nothing really on the charts, okay? Next is RVN USDT, also referred to as Ravencoin. And we spoke about Ravencoin earlier. Uh, and Ravencoin looks like, yep, Ravencoin shot up retested the area so this support zone yep so ravencoin uh, was making this any channel but it broke it retested the area and it shot right up so i can readjust this trend line over here yeah so you retest it so that's exactly what it did it broke above the area it broke above retested the area and it shot right up and it's still moving towards the upside uh, there is a divergence that is seen over here and simply what a divergence means is that uh, This area, okay, I'll show you in the charts here. So this area is higher than this area Okay, I'll use this as an example. This is a better example. So you see how this area is low, right? But this area is high. So I'll draw a trend line to show you what that means However, the RSI should match this action, right? But the RSI is showing us something else the RSI is showing us that this area is high and this area is low. Uh, generally, when you see this, uh, the fact that these two confluences or these two don't match each other, uh, what we realize is there could be a price reversal at, at some point soon, okay? Um, so I personally wouldn't be trading this coin, Raven coin. Uh, I would wait for a reversal to occur and possibly a really nice uh, retraction to the downside before thinking of entering. So I could potentially see this to the downside, to the next major support zone, which could be at the 0 0.08837. Uh, let's just see if there's any events to see if this is a manipulated move. Because events generally uh, push prices, right? So Raven has an event, a having, but that's not enough, it's too far away. So um, I don't know why, honestly, it is uh, rising. It must be a really good coin for it to rise like this or it must, be, it must be price manipulation. Uh, but I wouldn't enter off for RVN USDT. If you do want to enter, you can enter off the trend line touch. And again, that is your risk entirely, right? Um, so that's scenario A and scenario B right now. But you have to understand that there is a divergence, 
which means uh, at some point there could be a reversal. It may not happen now. We may just see a steady move to the upside till you never know however high it will go. Okay, next coin is SXP USDT. Okay, so SXP USDT is uh, essentially SXP. I spoke about SXP in a video and I should have held SXP, which I didn't. And Swipe is making moves because of an event on the 28th, I believe. Yeah, so it has a lot of events, see? So the 21st, the 28th. Yeah, so Swipe was actually an amazing coin. I believe it was my third video and I should have held Swipe and I deeply regret not holding Swipe because it has made amazing moves to the upside. Yeah, it's made over 200% moves. Yeah, so it's uh, I should have held Swipe. Um, it's okay. Uh, there's a major event on the 28th. Today is the 19th. Uh, so what we could see is we could see a move down towards the trend line for a possible entry. That's quite possible because we currently have a divergence in price. And simply what a divergence means is that, as you see, this price is higher than this price, right? And But over here, over here, it is... Sorry, there is no divergence. Okay. Which means that uh, or it could still keep going up at this point, which is very good. Um, okay. Sorry about that. So we'll see this. So what we could see is a move to the downside, right? And depending upon where it touches, we'll have to see if there is a previous horizontal zone. So if you see horizontal zone over here, there is a major zone over here. It's touched it a few times. So this will be the horizontal zone. Uh, a move to the downside, possibly to here, to this area. And a touch to this area will potentially be a good buy area to buy. SXP, okay? because um, since it is a double bottom and it shot up it's retested already but it could potentially come down again um, another scenario for this obviously is a break of the area a retest and a move to the downside okay so these are two scenarios for SXP uh, this could potentially be a good buy because SXP is not that big of a coin yeah so that could be a simple move like that could be 50% gains right a simple move from here to back to its all time high could be 50% gains and that could happen within a day so this would be a good coin to trade um, if it's not too small in price. Let's just look at the market cap of SXP. So it's 292 million, which is a pretty, it's, I would consider it a mid-size mid -size cap coin, right? So it's not that bad actually, but it is really getting pumped right now. So SXP is, uh, upon the retest may be a good entry for SXP, depending upon what it does. Okay, so it may go up or it may go down. Uh, if it breaks through the support area next coin is wrx usdt and wrx is essentially making an uptrend currently it's a clear uptrend there is a divergence on uh, wrx and a divergence simply means that as you see this side is lower right this area is lower than this area right so if you look at what a divergence is this area is lower than this area, okay? But over here, that's not the same at all. This area is higher than this area, right? And simply what that means is that uh, you could potentially see a reversal at some point soon and uh, could potentially break this ascending channel as well. Uh, so WRX, um, in my opinion, could do this because of the um, uh, RSI divergence that you see over here. Uh, or it could just keep going up depending upon um, price action essentially. But I personally wouldn't trade this because of some, because of the divergence that you see over here. And because of that reason, I wouldn't trade it because it is going to be risky. Okay. And if it does break that area, we could potentially see a move uh, to this trend line. Which would uh, match up to the previous horizontal zones as well. Okay. So basically, we could see if it breaks this uh, ascending channel. We can see it touch this other ascending channel over here. Let me just draw this clearly. Yeah, so it could touch the 0 0.16 if it breaks to this. If you're holding WRX, keep holding it. But if it does break this uh, trend line, you might want to get out of it because we may be able to see a move towards the downside, towards the 0 0.16 region, which would be the next uh, major support zone. And that would be a decrease of 28 to 30 percent. OK, uh, the next coin is Theta USDT. Okay, Theta USDT is clearly overbought. 
Um, I personally wouldn't trade this because I don't like buying coins that are completely overbought. I like to buy low and sell high, not buy high and try to sell higher. Um, but right now, it's not giving us anything. So um, right now, it was making this channel over here. So as you can see, it was making this. It broke up, retested the area, and it shot right up. Okay, so it's making an overextended uh, wave right now towards the upside. Um, you could potentially enter a Theta token upon the retouch of this area, upon the trend line. However, I wouldn't just because we are completely overbought and we also have a RSI divergence. So as you see in the RSI, we are considered overbought. We're above uh, towards the ET region. And also, uh, if what, okay, just, I'll just keep simple. Like, yeah, I'll just hold it at that because I don't get too uh, technical with it. But I just personally wouldn't buy this coin because we are overbought. Um, I could potentially see something like this happening for Theta. If you are holding Theta token, um, you might want to get out if it breaks this trend line zone that I've just drawn out. Just because at that point in time, there will be uncertainty. And in my opinion, we could see a heavy retrace because we have made severe, uh, significant gains. And people want to take their profits at that time, right? So we could see a heavy retrace at that point. Next is Uni USDT. So Uni USDT is currently at its all-time high on the daily. If you go to the four hourly, it looks like it is making a new structure on the top. And we currently are. So we are making a sending channel, right? For uh, Uni USDT. If you want to buy in for Uni, I'll show you the best entry. So we also have broken uh, the channel downwards. Uh, we could enter off, so we've broken up. Now it looks like it is retesting. Uh, it could retest this area. I'll show you one second. So I get the horizontal line. This could be the area to buy actually over here. This could be the retest because we have a previous horizontal zone as well as a descending trend line zone. And this may be the perfect area to buy a uni USDT, okay? Right over there. If it comes down to that region, even possibly now if I go to the 15 minute and take a look yeah so what you can do for the entrance over here is uh, wait for it as you see there's still a lot of uh, selling pressure if it keeps going down over here um, I'll just uh, I, this is gonna be a little technical but it's fine I'll just show you guys um, I would see it coming down to this region this would be the perfect area to buy so what we have over here is we have a previous horizontal zone Okay, you can consider, consider this a zone. I can put this up over here. So this entire area essentially, uh, we have this ascending channel and we have this trend line that it has broken down. So um, if you wanna get into this coin, essentially you could just do this. Just draw a trend line like that on the 15 minute because we are currently on support. Uh, if it breaks above it, if it breaks above it, Sorry, let me draw that again. So if it breaks above this area, uh, that would be the best entry in my opinion. Uh, but right now, again, it's a risk because I like buying at the bottom. I don't like to really buy when it's this high up already. But uh, yeah, we could be going to the upside for uni, depending upon, yeah, four hour closure as well. well let's go to one hour. Yeah. Yeah, we could be going up because it's a simple up and a retest. And from here, we could be making higher highs to potentially this region, right? So we have a move from here to there, which could be 13% gain. Yeah, so Uni could be positioned nicely for a good buy right now. Okay, uh, next. And if you want to exit, uh, I would suggest the break of this trend line if you are holding Uni. But currently, we are still in an uptrend. Next is one, also referred to as Harmony, and I believe this will be my last coin of the night, which is good. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm just going to try to find some structure for Harmony currently, and uh, Harmony right now doesn't really have a lot of structure to go off of. Uh, if you look at the one hour, we are currently making an ascending channel on the one hour chart. Okay. And we are trying to approach the all-time high, as you see over here, which we haven't touched yet. 
if you're looking to see if there's any uh, divergence, there isn't yet. So what we could see over here, if you want to buy Harmony USD, uh, we are making a downwards move. If you look at the 15 minute, All right? So we can just do one of these, and we can see it respecting. When it comes down to this area, we can either buy over here, or we can buy when it breaks and retest the area and make a move to the upside. So there's two areas to buy uh, Harmony USDT. First area is there. Second area is over here. Right, so there are two regions. If it breaks below this area, so if it breaks below, uh, what we could do is, we, and if, if you're holding one USDT, uh, I would suggest getting out of that. I mean, I personally would. You guys can do whatever you want with your money, but I personally would just because of the fact that uh, if that does happen, we can make a heavy retracement down to this region possibly, which is a lower trend line, and also a, a, a previous uh, support area, right? So that's a support area, that's a support area. So you can see a heavy retracement. If I want to get into Harmony, I personally would possibly get into Harmony at this region because that's a much safer region because that would be a nice pullback uh, for an entrance, okay? And also we are uh, almost at the all-time high and I don't like buying something so close to this all-time high unless I would like to, unless I, I want to scalp, but that's not my trading style, so I wouldn't do that, okay? Uh, so if you want to take, if you want to buy here, you should take profits in my opinion, maybe over here or take something off the table uh, just because it may severely reject this area at that point in time okay and if we do break below this trend line region we could potentially see a retracement to this area so that's also on the table all right guys i think that's everything that was 30 coins or 31 coins something like that uh if you guys like these kind of videos uh do comment and tell me if you like this uh type of stuff because honestly this is quite uh depleting it takes a lot of energy out of me to do this because it is one hour straight of looking at charts and talking uh, continuously, so my throat does get pretty dry at the end of it. Uh, if you guys want me to look at more coins, uh, I'll probably be doing this once a week, so every Friday night. Uh, just go to the Discord, or you can drop a comment down below in the comment section. And for next week, I'll try to add it in. And I understand that uh, over the week, I'll be getting a lot of people sending me names of coins. Uh, so I might have 40 to 50 coins next time, and if that's the case, I'll try to separate it into two parts. So you don't get sick of me talking essentially for, you know, two hours straight, whatever the case may be. All right, guys. Thank you so much for that. Uh, have an amazing Friday night, guys. Bye. See you.